Okay guys, my name is Josiah Wagner. I'm an officer with the Gonsai Club. I'm in my ninth quarter and we got... Keisha Lee. Keisha I'm Lee. I'm an officer in training. Awesome. So we are going to go over um, L5 special listings for you guys. And then we're also going to be reviewing uh, lumbar pushes. So I'm just going to keep this simple uh, as to not confuse everyone. So with your L5 special listing, we're more concerned about the scoliotic curve in the back. So typically what you would do is you would contact the side of the open wedge. Uh, however, with L5, you can contact the opposite side, not of the open wedge, based on the scoliosis. So for example, if we had, if we had a, uh, like a PRS, but the scoliosis was on the, the high side of the scoliosis was on the opposite side. So if the scoliosis was this way and we had a PRS, the open wedge on this side, we would actually contact the mammillary process on this side right here because we would not want to adjust into the concavity of the spine because we would make that worse. Same thing if we had a complex listing, if we had a PLI, and the open wedge was on this side, but the spinous was rotated this way, we would contact the spinous process because we would want to, again, stay on the high side of the curve. Um, the reason for that is because the sacrum provides a very strong foundation of the pelvic girdle that we're able to contact the low side of the spine and to lift it up and to fix that L5, even though there's that scoliosis. Um, if any of that was confusing for you guys, just kind of like reach out to us. Uh, this is all referenced from chapter six of the chapters. And then we're gonna move on to a review of the pushes. Now we're gonna do a quick review of the lumbar pushes. So first we wanna cover perfect patient placement. So we have the patient on the table here, now you just want to assess the patient to make sure that they are in a completely straight line from head to toe. So you're going to approach the patient, I'm going to ask the patient to tuck their hip under, bring their hip under for me so I can get their leg between my legs. Next I'm going to straighten this bottom leg here, I'm going to make sure that the heel goes from here and then up to the shoulder and then I'm going to bring shoulder down a little bit and then I'm going to make sure that the head is facing forward. Next, I want to roll the patient towards me because I want to find my contact and for a simple listing for like a PLS, I want the spinous facing towards me so that's perfect right here. So she's facing up and if it was a PLS, the, the spinous would be facing towards me because we have a spinous contact. So next I would kind of see where the patient's leg falls here. I don't want to bring their top leg too far forward because that's going to bind it up right here. And then it's also going to close uh, the vertebrae in the front because we want to get that P to A lift. So you wouldn't be able to do that if you bring that leg too far up here. You want to kind of bring it to a neutral spot. Next I'm going to roll the patient and then I'm gonna find my contact. So I'm gonna find that L5 contact. Let's say again that we have that PLS. So I'm gonna tissue pull from left to right, inferior to superior, and then I'm gonna set my pisiform right on that inferior aspect of the spinous. As you can see with the simple listing, my hand is able to cross that spinous. Next, I wanna take out a little bit of that slack so I'm gonna grab that shoulder and then I'm gonna take it superior and posterior. Now I don't wanna take it too far because again, I would bind up the spinous process, the muscles would start to get tight. So I just wanna take it just a little bit to take a little bit of that slack out. Next, I want to get into position for the adjustment. So I'm gonna turn my front foot, bring it to the table and have my toe facing up the table this way and then I'm gonna roll, and then I'm gonna set my ASIS onto the greater trochanter here to get that patient. Now it's also very important for me to get that line of drive that my toe 
is facing this way. So this back leg toe needs to be facing this way into the table. That way my force is going into the table and I'm stabilizing their pelvis. So I got my contact, got the slack out. My front foot is facing up. Most of the weight is gonna be here on the pelvis. My toe is facing in. And then as we're getting ready to thrust, you wanna have the patient relax. Get your arm out for that line of drive. And in. Now, if it's a complex listing, if we have a PRI-M at fifth lumbar, I'm gonna reset get my patient between my legs right here. So I'm gonna find that fifth lumbar again. I'm actually gonna come off to the mammillary process. So I'm gonna tissue pull out to the mammillary process. And then my pisiform is gonna contact that mammillary process and my fingers are going straight up the spine. As you notice, I'm not crossing the spine this time. We're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna take the slack out of the spine by pushing the shoulder superior and a little bit of posterior. I'm going to turn my superior leg up, roll the patient to get that ASIS on that greater trochanter, leaving most of my weight on this back leg. And then again here, have that patient relax, find the, find the pulse of the patient, come up for the adjustment, and Just like that. All right guys, we hope this video was helpful. We know it was kind of short and sweet and to the point, but if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us and uh, keep practicing.